Hi everybody, Alex Deplore here from Expert Forex and in today's video I'm going to resolve one of the most misunderstood concepts of set files and this will explain why robot settings results cannot be repeated. I can almost guarantee that what I'm going to show you today you have never seen before. It's a very technical aspect that explains why set files do not work. So here's some typical remarks and in fact I got one uh, two days ago and that's why I'm doing this video. I watched your video and I tried to replicate your results but I couldn't. We can't even do that ourselves so you're in the same boat. I'm not getting the same results by backtesting your supplied set files. Even though I copied your exact test conditions Again, sorry, we can't do the, do the same thing and I'm going to show you why. I experienced blown accounts when testing your set file and we're going to be looking at about 10 factors why this could be happening but certainly this could be due to testing methodologies. And then the last one, all I need, all I need to make a million dollars is for you to supply me with a set file. Now after you've watched this video you'll see how silly that comment or that wish, it's a wish, is. So I'm not new to the subject, I've made lots of videos about it, clearly don't understand the concept of set files. So here's, a, uh, here's one, the good, bad and the ugly side of set files and what you need to know before using them. If you haven't watched this, please go and watch it. It explains exactly the weaknesses of set files. Then there's this other one, set files don't work. This is the point of this video but it offers a solution. There is a better solution. So if you watch this video, you will actually see a solution to that problem. Then we've got this one here. The truth why those trading robot optimized settings never work. And here's the solution, how to fix them and how to manage those settings. So I do, I'm not only criticizing them, but I'm telling you how to fix them. And then this week I produced this video, how to create million dollar settings, where I show two ways of filtering your test results to give you settings that have the greatest chance of working in the long term. So there's a lot of information out there. And so let's get into this particular video's topic, which as I said, a lot of traders, even the most experienced ones don't know about. Because I know a lot of traders that invest huge amounts of, of money buying computers that are water-cooled and all kinds of things to do the most accurate specific settings or they, they actually subcontract, they actually go and buy a service that will provide them settings and then they don't realize the weaknesses of these settings, even the most experienced traders. Okay, so here we go. When MetaTrader... I'm going to read this slowly, performs an optimi optimization run, which I did a whole lot in the last week and I made videos about them. It uses today's exchange rates the, and it uses the exchange rates exactly at the time that you do the run. So what it then does, it converts all the results, the first trade in your period that you're testing and the last one, at those exchange rates and then converts those results into a single currency because your uh, broker account will be in US dollars or it might be in euros, it might be in Australian dollars. It then has to take those results and convert them into your base account. So that's another conversion that takes place and that is how they report the results. So there are two weaknesses that we can see here. It uses today's rate, uh, rates to evaluate transactions that, let's say, happened a, a, a year ago. That's the one. And then it uses today's rate to convert those results into your base account results. Now, it's, uh, all right, this might sound a lot very technical, but those people that have used optimization might start, a little bell might be ringing or... A light might be going off or something, they suddenly realize, oh, is that how the MetaTrader strategy tester works? How else can it work? And I'm going to show you proof 
actual proof of this. Okay, so now here's an example. Let's say you're optimizing the euro yen using a US trading account because your, your account's in US dollars. So And the broker gives you the US dollars results after a transaction of the euro yen has taken place. So such as in live trading, the tester has to convert every single transaction into US dollars. And to do that, the, the tester has to take the current, at the time of the test, Euro USD rate and then the USD yen rate into account to convert those results that come out of there into a single currency, which is your account base USD. Can you see the complication involved there? There's a multitude of conversions required for every single trade. Now we all know that the Euro USD and the USD Yen can vary tremendously over time. So those USD results that the broker is reporting on your strategy tester can change from day to day. And because they can change from day to day, your results are going to vary from day to day. And I'm, again, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of this. But this is a very big point that people don't appreciate. So to state the obvious that the chances of you testing a set file using exactly the same US, uh, Euro USD and uh, USD Yen rates that are exactly the same are extremely remote. And we'll see a, a few examples later in the video. But I'm hoping, I, I hope you're starting to grasp the limitations of the strategy test. There, there's no answer to them. That, that's the best it can do. Let's put it that way. Okay, so what we did is we, we uh, took two tests. We tested two currencies. And we back-tested them on Thursday this week. And then we back-tested them on Friday this week without touching anything. So we left the test, we got the first result, we said okay, and we kept the computer running. And then the next day we just pressed start and it did a back test of the exactly the same settings, exactly the same data, exactly the same period. It, nothing changed. There's a consistency. And guess what? We got different results. Now, if you don't believe me, go and try this out. T do a test one day, run it the next day, and see if your results are the same. They will be the same if the exchange rate hasn't changed. Chance of that, very remote. Okay, now this is a bit complicated. I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible. This is my, our final analysis of what happened. And hopefully I can zoom in on the important parts during the actual video. But when you do a back test, it gives you the results in this format. But it also, and this is called the report format, it's a summary format, but it also gives you the results in the account format. So and it says, okay, here's transaction one, I entered it, and transaction two, I entered transaction, oh, they are closed, transaction three and transaction two and in transaction one in LIFO order, and there are the results. So it, it actually shows you the statement, the trading statement of what happened. So here's the test that we ran on the 3rd of the 10th. I think it was a th uh, Thursday. And the results here were 31,280, and we traded 565 trades, and the drawdown was 5169. So those are the two, three areas we're basically focusing on. We're saying those results should be the same if you run it the same, the same day. And then we have a look at the first trades that actually happened in 2023. We say these are the first trades and they are the results of those first trades. So when we run it the next day, we expect it to be exactly the same. And that's the point here is that it changes every single transaction. So, so let's see what happened the next day. So here's the next day. That's the 4th of the 10th. I don't know where the heading went. But look at that total net profit. It is um, it's, it's about $700 less. Now it should be the same. We haven't changed anything. 
But what has changed? The exchange rates of these currencies. The, the euro, and this is the euro yen, so it would be the euro USD and the USD yen, and even the euro, uh, euro, euro yippee uh, exchange rate will also impact it. But the, the tester has it converted to US. US dollars, remember, and these are all US dollars. So, all right, so we've already got, look, I've run the same test the next day and I've got a different result. Even the total number of trades has changed. Now, this can happen because if you're getting different results, your logic might be based on your account balance and all kinds of other reasons, or your stops and your targets and things like that might be affected by this exchange rate. So, there's a whole lot of reasons why your actual trades can change, especially if you're testing it over a year-long period. And there's another eye-opener, the actual number of trades changed. And then the drawdown, we've got uh, 1,000, uh, we've got 5,107 uh, compared to 5,169. So all the numbers have changed. All the numbers have changed. And and let's have a look when they change. And uh, to do that, I've, we've, I've done an extract of the actual account. And there, let's just have a look at those numbers there. Uh, the, the the closing of those three deals we look across here and you can see that they all different so every single deal is impacted by this change of exchange rate in one day one day all right so there we are so in fact if you look here there the final result was 10 10,318 here we have 10,314 not a big difference but if we go to uh, and then if we go down to the next one there are five deals that have closed all uh, 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 all nicely positively uh, 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 um, and the result is 10634 uh, year we have 106.26 so it's not big differences but they mount up and as we've seen the final difference because there was 500 transaction came to $700 now I hope I'm starting to give you an idea of why you can't duplicate my results and also, importantly, why I can't duplicate my results. There's no trickery involved. It's just pure maths. Okay, so here's another example. We've got the pound, the euro pound, and again, the third and the fourth. And here we have a result, quite a nice result. $112,000 it produced over that year. Um, it traded 56 transactions and generated uh, a drawdown of 36,600. So let's go and look at the next uh, uh, calculation. And there we are. We uh, It's right down. It's most probably down by well over a thousand dollars well over a thousand dollars that's quite a bit and um, and the number of trades have stayed the same that's pretty good too and then the drawdown in this particular case has actually come down by about four hundred dollars but can you see the variation results and that's in one day so again let's have a look at the uh, trades and uh, we look at this particular one um, and we see that the result was 2,374. We look here, 2,047. A little bit bigger now because we're using slightly bigger uh, lot sizing. And if we look at the bottom here, where some really bigger lot sizing was used, uh, result is uh, 7,933, 7,841. Big difference, big difference. And then this one, the negative was uh, 7,702. And this one was 7613. Big differences. So, again, the point here is that from day to day, you're going to get different results, and your transactions are going to be translated at different exchange rates. And I'm hoping that this will give you an answer to one of the questions why can't i replicate your results why can't i replicate my own results why are set files uh, results that i'm experiencing so different especially if you're using a set file that's been produced a month ago i mean exchange rates must have gone all over the show and you could experience quite severe differences
Okay, now I focused on the one because I n almost know that there are very, very few uh, robot traders that know that aspect of the strategy tester. So we're going to just briefly go over a few other areas that might cause a difference. Uh, there could be historical data. Now, for instance, uh, some traders use their broker da data, which is completely bad. Some brokers use uh, MT5. Now, I just must, there's a little personal note here. I'm not saying it's true or not, but it's my, our experience. We tested MT5 results compared to MT4 results. And we know MT4 because we manage that. We can control it and we know what it is. And the quantity and quality of the MT5 results are, is not good. It's not good. We dropped it. We tested a number of robots, a number of, of currencies, and the results were so badly inconsistent that we dropped MT5. Now I'm not, they, they have fantastic graphs and they tell you all these things, but I'm not, I certainly wouldn't rely on MT5 results. Just, uh, just a personal note, I'm not um, getting into too much detail on that, but from a professional point of view, we don't use MT5. All right, so there could be leverage differences. Your broker might have uh, 50 to one. Uh, the testing could have been done on 200 to one. Those kind of differences can cause margin calls uh, in your results. Margin call differences. Now, that, that's slightly different to margin requirements. Some brokers will create a margin call at 50% drawdown, others at 30% drawdown, others uh, at 100% drawdown. So you need to know when your margin calls are going to happen. Your results will vary from are based on that. Overnight charges are ignored in the strategy test. So just remember that they are ignored. Uh, sometimes overnight charges can be positive, other times it can be negative. The currency of the base account. So if if you try to use a set file that's been generated on the euro on a euro account and you're trying to trade it in the US uh, on a US account, there will be obvious differences as shown by the conversion exercise that we've done recently. Spread charge can vary from broker to broker in reality. And also uh, the volatility of the spread. Some brokers uh, spreads uh, vary considerably, others are fairly consistent. Weekend broker times, another major point where set files will not work. So let's say you have a set file, it's based on GMT plus two, a broker that uses GMT plus two. Your broker is GMT. Let's just take that as an example. So the set file creates a transaction in GMT plus two at the end of a weekend because the brokers will change, will cut off at different times. The broker will cut off at GMT for the uh, Friday weekend. The other one will be GMT plus two. So they m might be different times. So there could be transactions that happen in that gap between the broker's cutoffs and in the gap on Monday morning when the one broker opens earlier than the other one. So broker times are also a cause of uh, uh, set file differences. Also, some brokers have close their trading at midnight for five minutes. And they do that to do all the overnight charges and all kinds of other things, but they don't allow trading for five minutes during the day, every day. Now, let's say this, the, the uh, set files were created on brokers that don't do that, and there was a transaction in exactly in that time. Obviously, you're not going to experience those kind of results. And I basically also spoke about the GMT offset. There are a few other ones which I'm not going to go to. Those are the major ones where you will not experience the same results using set files. There are a lot of many other reasons why you will not experience the same results using set files. I mean, uh, one of the things is basically set files have been created on a unique price action over let's say a year unique it won't ever repeat again it's pretty unique there is no guarantee that that will uh, that that price action will ever happen again into the future there's no guarantee and it's it's almost 100 percent sure not to happen okay now you can go and have a look at those videos for solutions on okay 
I hear you, set files are not that reliable, but what can I do? Now, I have mentioned two videos that you can go and have a look at to get ideas on how to manage those set files. Um, uh, certainly the one where you do filters, you, you take your results, you filter them, and then you filter them even more, that really is one of the best um, uh, ways of creating robust set files. All right, and then I, th I think the most important thing you, you need to understand that re robot trading sounds automatic. It sounds like you can buy a robot, get the set files from your supplier, plug it in and make a fortune. That's what it sounds like. But even robot trading requires uh, some experience and logic and common sense and things like that. So let's have a look at the success factors for using trading robots. Firstly, you, you need to rely on forward trading results. So in other words, even if you've got a set file that you created from Optimize and put it into a demo account and forward trade it for three to five weeks, only once you've experienced favorable results during that period can you go ahead and live trade it. Don't just take it straight from the optimization into your live account. You need to have an intimate, and intim by intimate I mean study the user manual. You need to know how the robot works so that you can deal with uh, negative results and correct them and uh, make your positive results even better. So you need to have an intimate, now a lot of people again buy the robot and just plug it in. You need to know the nature of the currency that you use. Is it volatile? Does it trend? All that type of thing. If your robot is a sideways ro robot, don't use trending and volatile currencies. Use sideways and low volatility currencies. You must take into consideration the account size. So a lot of traders, what they do, they go out and they back test on a $10,000 account or a $100,000 account. They back test and they optimize and all that type of thing. And they say, okay, now I'm going to trade it on my $500 account. Now, you need to take your account size into account when doing your trading, your optimization, your forward testing, all that type of thing. Don't go and test it on under, uh, 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 account sizes that are different to what you would be using in, in your live situation. Position sizing, again, that's a, that's a factor of your account size. A lot of people don't have skills at position sizing according to their account size. So, so they would go and test on a $10,000 and not adjust appropriately when they're trading on a $1,000 account, that type of thing. Risk management approach is important. Some traders like to take high risks. Other ones like to have low risk and steady returns. So that's these are all success factors. The Sometimes uh, there's a mixture. Uh, traders use 80% as low risk settings and and then 20 percent on high risk settings you know you can mix them around um the traders psychological makeup is all, often missed traders when there's a drawdown panic they start closing the deals they start putting in uh, account protection software and all kinds of things it's all part of your psychological makeup you don't have trust in the system you don't have experience to deal with unique situations and you start panicking or you make really illogical decisions bad decisions and uh, so, so your psychological makeup, even if you have back tested and tested and done all kinds of things, you will reach a panic point at some stage and your reaction to that panic point can determine you, the success of, or your success as a trader. Your traders experience, again, the, 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 the best way of, of getting experience is trading demo accounts. So uh, uh, you trade 200 demo accounts. You trade 200 experiences rather than using one demo tra account, trading one strategy, trading one currency. You need to develop experience. There's the little technical things that people that do this uh, for a living, uh, that it's internalized. They can't explain. It's like... Um, suddenly trying to explain somebody to somebody how to drive a car, uh, you will leave out, oh, close the door, for instance. You, you wouldn't tell the person to close, the, you, you, because it's instead of you get in the car and close the door, you won't put that as a step. 
that they have to do. The same thing happens in trading. Teachers or experienced people leave out some really critical <laughs> elements of the trading because they take it for granted. Your, tr your confidence level against your confidence level, if you... Uh, if you are just trusting the, the seller of the robot, you're buying the robot, you're using the set file, then your confidence level can't be too high. But if you've tested personally, you've personally experienced, you've forward traded, your, your personal confidence is so high because you've proved it to yourself. So very important that, again, that you have a high personal confidence and not rely on gurus and what is said in the marketing and all that type of thing. And there are many more, but I'm just highlighting the more, most important things. For you to succeed as a robot trader, the automation doesn't take common sense and logic out of the game. And it also doesn't take the psychological side of, the, of trading out of the game. Now, this video has been a bit longer than I anticipated, but I was trying to cover as much information about how to succeed when you are robot trading and also why set files have marginal use in terms of the overall results that you're going to be getting. They have a role, but don't over it emphasize the role because they have lots of weaknesses so the best compliment you can give me is to share this video with other traders if you think it's appropriate so from me alex deploy cheerio